Hello, my name is Ingrid, and I'm going to read a story titled How Sweet It Is by Joe Schmidt. And I am here in Louisiana today because this story is set in Louisiana, and it mentions a pirogue, which is a boat, kind of like a kayak. And I'm sitting in a kayak. Okay, here's the story. We were very poor and lived on a small farm in Louisiana, about in the middle of the state. My father raised cotton, but decided to plant some sugar cane to get extra money to pay bills. So he planted a 10-acre field to cane. He told my sister and I that it was our job to hoe the weeds until the cane got tall enough to shade out any new weeds. We wanted to help because we could see how hard mom and pop worked to keep us fed and get us clothes for school. The cane was growing fast as we had lots of rain and it was looking good, but dad said the sugar mill would not take our small crop. We could not afford to have one of the big farmers come with the cane combine to cut it and haul it away with their crop. Dad was very mad as he could have planted that, that 10 acres to okra or beans and at least we would have gotten something. I told dad that I had seen an old sugar mill out in the swamp. It had been there for years and I was sure that some hundred year old machine was owned by someone long gone, never to be missed if we used it. He agreed to go and look at it, but laughed when he saw it. He said it had been powered by horses walking around in a circle, turning the mill that squeezed the cane between large steel wheels to get out the sugar syrup. I told him that we had an engine from Cousin Charlie's old truck that would work better than a horse. Then he said, what good would that be because you need to boil the cane juice down to get rid of all the water. I told him that the old iron pot is right there and all we need to do is boil the cane squeezings just like they did a hundred years ago. He had a good laugh and said we were going home because it was dinner time. My sister and I had lots of friends. Benny had an old boat and Lizette, my sister's Cajun friend, had more brothers and sisters than you could count. So we called them together and told them the plan. Saturday morning, we had a small flotilla of boats filled with wild Cajuns headed off to the old sugar mill deep, to get the old sugar mill from deep in the swamp. I will say it was a lot of work, but we did have fun, except for Benny, who just barely escaped being gra grabbed by a gator. It was only because crazy Lizette jammed a paddle from her pirogue in its mouth as it jumped out of the water, lunging at Benny. That gator clamped down on the paddle and splinters flew everywhere. Then she whacked it on the snout with the other paddle and the gator, gator flipped around and went back in the water as Lizette stood up in the pirogue screaming like a banshee. That Lizette makes us all laugh when she gets wound up like that. We got it all home and set it up in an old shed near the pond. Two of the older guys started working on getting the old truck engine ready to power the mill. The girls were all busy cleaning the rust and grease from the beast so when the cane was ripe in a couple of weeks we could try it out. Dad came to see what we were doing and said he was impressed with the work we had done, but asked a good question. What are you going to do with all of the molasses that you get from this adventure? Lizette was nearby and jumped in front of Dad and handed him a quart mason jar with a label that said, Sweetness, the special Cajun treat. She said, the girls and I have been making these labels for the past few days with markers I got for my birthday and we have enough for all of the molasses. I said, we were going to sell them in the back of Char Charlie's truck down in town and the Piggly Wiggly grocery store said they would sell them too. That is when mom came in with some bad news. She said, there is a man at the front door from the county health department and said he had talked to the Piggly Wiggly manager and heard about our plan to sell homemade molasses. He has a paper that says we cannot do this as we are not a certified activity and do not have a proper license to sell food products. And then there he was, all proper with a suit and tie, standing behind Mama, waving his paper around. Lizette grabbed the paper and held it up in front of him, saying, Have you reviewed this with our attorney, the right honorable Judge Docket, who happens to be my favorite uncle? The man stammered, Well, no, I have not. Lizette said, well, I would advise you to do this prior to coming into our molasses factory and making false demands. He laughed and said, this is not a factory. It is a pile of rusty junk that should be taken to the scrapyard immediately. Lizette said, it is indeed our factory and I would advise you to speak of it as such as I am sure the right honorable Judge Duckett will be speaking to your boss this afternoon about this unnecessary intrusion. The man said, well, there is no reason to cause problems, and I am sure that if you are careful and make sure everything is clean, it will be okay, as it is a, a small family farm business. 
Lizette thanked him for his time as he headed back to his car, and as soon as he was driving away, we all broke out laughing and cheering for our hero, Lizette. The end. Hi, my name is Joe Schmidt. I uh, like to write short stories, and I write them and send them out an email to folks that I know, uh, clients and friends. I've been doing this for some time, but lately I've decided that I'm going to do something different. I'm going to record these videos, have them narrated, and send them out uh, on YouTube and Facebook and other places to see if I can find uh, another group of people that might be interested in seeing these stories. They're great for kids, great for grandkids, um, and my grandkids love me to tell these stories, and that's kind of how I started doing it. I also sell real estate, and I, I enjoy helping people. I do mission work and different things around the world, and helping people is something that I find a great joy in doing. Real estate uh, and selling a house is probably the biggest financial transaction that you'll ever have in your lifetime. And it can be very stressful, especially now, because there are so few listings. Listings are down about 50% from what they have been in the past. And this means uh, difficult times. And, and so the problem is, uh, if you want to sell your house and you want to move, you're afraid to do that because if you list the house, you don't have much time to find another place and there are so few listings that you can't find a place. I work with some lenders that are very creative and they've got some solutions for this problem. And what it does, it allows you to basically look for a house, find the perfect house you want, and then buy that house and move in, and then sell the house, your old house. It takes the stress away because you're able to find the new place, the perfect place, move in, and then uh, maybe do some work in the house, do some painting, things like that. Uh, we'll stage it so it looks looks fantastic. And then you can move in and, and your problems are solved. So give me a call. Let me know. Let's talk. Send me a text. Send me an email. And we'll get together and solve that problem for you. Thanks.